There are a few more things I'd like to say about Christian young earth creationists, and in this video I'm going to focus on some of what Ray Comfort and Eric Hovind have said. First of all, young earth creationists are science deniers. They have to be. They claim that large swathes of geology, biology, physics and cosmology are wrong. This would be noteworthy if the people making such claims were experts in the relevant scientific fields. I don't think I have to tell you that they are not. The scientific method is the best and most effective way human beings have devised of figuring out how this amazing universe we find ourselves in works. As such, I think it connects us with reality in a way which fundamental religion cannot. They deny reality in order to spread their religion. Let me draw your attention to the Statement of Faith on the Answers in Genesis website. The 66 books of the Bible are the written word of God. Please note that the 66 books of the Protestant canon do not comprise the same list as the Catholics, Jews and Mormons, and that the early church debated long and hard about whether to include books such as the Gospel of Peter and the Book of Revelation. Answers in Genesis goes on to say, The Bible is divinely inspired and inerrant throughout. Its assertions are factually true in all the original autographs. It is the supreme authority in everything it teaches. Its authority is not limited to spiritual, religious or redemptive themes, but includes its assertions in such fields as history and science. So there you have it. Proof that creationism is unscientific. Creation today has something similar. The final guide to the interpretation of scripture is scripture itself, and that scripture is our final authority. No apparent, perceived or claimed evidence in any field, including history and science, can be valid if it contradicts scripture. For any creationists watching this, science is all about discovering the truth, not affirming the contents of the Bible. If it so happens that the Bible is the truth, fine but my own inquiries have led to a different conclusion. At least take the blinders off for long enough to understand what objective research is and try it out. Here's Eric Hovind confirming where he believes the ultimate authority lies. You know, because our authority is the scripture. We have to go back to the Bible if we want to get the truth about creation, <laughs> evolution, age of the earth, anything like that. We got to go back to scripture. So, if modern science concludes that it's impossible for a human being to survive in the stomach of a large fish for three days, then apparently science is wrong, not the Bible. Okay... Now we move on to something which irritates atheists no end. Why don't people look at the evidence and conclude God made the world? Um, I would say, first of all, you're born with that in you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, everybody knows God exists. Here we go back to the book which, according to creationists, cannot be wrong. There are only those that say that he doesn't, or those that say he's not the creator, you can are, talk to them if you want. are suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. That camera we're, there. We're in a den. Yeah. Oh. The, them, not them. That's the yeah. other studio. Okay. Uh, wow, ADD. You're talking about behemoth still? <laughs> Squirrel. Romans chapter 1. It says everybody knows that God exists. There are only those that suppress the truth and unrighteousness. If you're suppressing the truth and unrighteousness, what do you at least have? You have, you're holding the truth. Hmm. And then they express that in unrighteousness. So, yeah, everybody actually knows God exists. The problem is uh, they deny what they know to be true. Come on, Eric. If we knew God was real, then we'd automatically believe it. Therefore, we wouldn't be atheists. I would call it a form of self-deception. Self-deception? That's interesting, coming from a science denier. Um, and it really takes people to get educated to the form of that, because we're born with that inside of us. We know God exists. We, you know, you guys talk about this all the time. We know that there is a God. So, Romans chapter 1, I think, is a great passage that explains that. So, let's have a look at Romans chapter 1, verses 19 to 22. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. He hasn't made it plain to me. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, 
so that people are without excuse. Hmm, I have trouble seeing invisible qualities. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claim to be wise, they become fools. I must say, I don't know God. I've never seen him, and everything I know about him comes from what other people have told me, and what I've read in the Bible. Which seems to me to be a collection of mythologized stories, some of which might be loosely based on actual historic events. So, Eric, why do you think that we disbelieve or deny that your God exists? They loved their sin. Yes. I go, wow, that's, that's right where we're at today. We just have what, what the scoffers and the skeptics are calling a, a more sophisticated way to try to, to try to get God out of the equation, a more intellectual way to get God out of the equation. Yeah. You really do have to get educated to be that stupid. Yeah. That's, a, that? that's, that's a good quote, because some of the dumbest people I know are university students. They, yeah. they believe and say dumb, dumb things. You know, I just, um, it really is not a matter of evidence. We can go through the evidence. It doesn't matter about the evidence. It really comes down to our starting point. That was that question. There we have it again. Creationists like Eric and Ray dismiss evidence which conflicts with their assumed conclusions. Not very objective, don't you think? Another thing which pisses us off is the assertion that we're dishonest. At the Reason Rally, it was at the largest gathering of secular humanists in the history of the world a couple months ago. Well, was there about 10 there? Right. <laughs> I was actually impressed. It was a rainy day. They had, uh, they had about 10,000. Now, they were expecting about 30,000, but it was a rainy day, so I give them credit. Uh, some, some people say they had 20,000, but when you're an atheist and lying isn't a problem, there might have been 30,000. Wow, that seems like a bit of a sweeping generalization to me. Now we get to the bit which demonstrates something which is either dangerous or just silly, depending whether these guys are saying what they actually believe or simply what they want the audience to hear. So how's evolution affecting children today? That question just came to me. Did it? Yeah. The evolution worldview affects kids uh, by teaching them that they're nothing but an animal and then they behave that way. Mm -hmm. We are animals, Eric. But the reality of that doesn't determine how we behave. It's not that simple. It really comes down to what you, what you believe is how you behave, right? Yes. We all agree with that? Yeah. So if you're taught that you're nothing but an animal and that you're nothing but uh, uh, something that has no morals, there are no moral absolutes, you're going to behave that way. Sex outside of marriage, who cares? Lying, stealing, who cares? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't matter. I had an A, I was on the uh, Fundamentally Flawed uh, podcast with a couple of atheists, and they asked me, they said, Eric, if you were not a Christian, would that, would that let you just do anything you want to do? I said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would live my life with absolutely no restraints at all. I would do whatever I want. And that's where we get lots of, you guys get lots of testimonies. I'd be well. in jail if I wasn't a Christian. I'd be breaking out of jail if I wasn't a Christian. <laughs> I would have gotten to counterfeiting. Nice. Because I got this propensity to print tracks, money tracks, yeah. trillion dollar bills, yeah. billion dollars. You don't know how many times the real thought has come to my mind. <laughs> I am a wretched sinner saved by the grace yeah. of God. Yeah. This is where the creationists seem to have an appalling lack of imagination. They seem unable to understand that not everybody thinks like them. For example, I'm an atheist who doesn't fear the punishment of hell in the slightest nor do I yearn for the awesomeness of heaven or an afterlife which is said to be so much better than this life. I don't believe any of that is real. I have the freedom to think and do more or less whatever I want. I say more or less because we do have a legal system which is designed to protect the general population from the activities of criminals. But even if I was living in a country run by anarchists, I wouldn't want to do the sort of thing which people end up in jail for in this one. I'm atheist, and I've never been to jail. I think... I'd be in jail if I wasn't a Christian. ...says more about these particular creationists than what they understand about atheists, or other people for that matter. Not everyone needs the threat of punishment and the promise of reward to stop them from embarking on a hedonistic crime spree. So, what happens to young creationists when they spend time away from home, Eric? Statistically, 75 to 85 percent of children who grow up in a Christian home are going to reject God's Word after one year of college. What? You mean exposure to the real world helps them to see the flaws in creationism? 
What's wrong with that? Yeah. That bothers me. That that drives me to no end because I think that they're just trying to be a product of their environment and they need the work of the Holy Spirit in their life. Rick, you can't save anybody. I can't save anybody. Mark and Tony, all the street preachers that you guys got out there, none of you can save a soul. It is only by the work and power of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. It seems to me that your ministry doesn't like to lose control of impressionable young minds. Which brings me back to a point I keep making. If the Bible is true, then however much you test that hypothesis, the conclusion will only confirm its validity. So, what's the ultimate point of the religious creationists? We understand that um, this salvation comes through the Holy Spirit, and we want people to go out and defend their faith. That kind of reminds me of the British royal family. I'm not what you'd call an anti-royalist. I'm kind of indifferent to them. But I do consider myself as more of a destroyer of faith. Well, that's really what I look at our ministry as, is we want to provide the ammunition. We want to provide the tools. We want to provide what is necessary to actually teach you how to defend your faith. So that while you're sharing the gospel, as these questions come up, you can actually hit it right at the foundation. Right. So, effectively, these guys and their followers are attempting to undermine science, evidence, and reason. And creationists wonder why freethinkers, skeptics, and atheists feel under attack. Personally, I'm not looking for any kind of revenge or counterattack, but I value the freedom of thought and expression which fundamental religion tries to take away. And I'm in awe of the universe and the science which has enabled us to understand and see so much more of it. Before I go, I will let Eric remind you of where he gets his information from. You know, because our authority is the scripture. We have to go back to the Bible if we want to get the truth about creation, <laughs> evolution, age of the earth, anything like that. we got to go back to scripture.